I am okay to me. Yes. I sure can. Hello. Can you hear me?
You can't hear me? Can you hear me now? I could hear you, Anna. That was you, right? Yeah, can it was. Okay. Yeah. I can't hear you, Kara. You can't hear. Can Anna hear me? Uh, maybe yes. It's me. It might be me. It's you, Cassandra. I know she can't hear me as I'm saying it, but. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I can hear you. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, I can hear everyone now. Can y'all okay. hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Uh -huh. So, so Kat will not be joining us for this particular session, and this session is also special because it is our very first ever Zoom uh, format, Zoom platform care coordinator info share. Um, and uh, I'm just going to do a quick welcome, and then Delight's going to take over with the sharing that you could share the agenda at any time, Delight. Um, On it. And um, just talk to us about the topics. And we'll uh, we'll do the best we can to answer questions and keep everybody on board here. So anyhow, it's just about a minute till. Do you want me to admit everyone now or mm, to wait write till it? it turns, wait till it turns two. Okay. Can see my screen okay? Okay, it's two o'clock, guys. I'm gonna meet everyone. Christmas could be your Sunday, December 17th today. Please do not take Christmas to the Brooklyn Hall. You'll have to unmute yourself, Delight. And Kara. Hey, thanks. Yeah, we're here. We're getting people in. There's a lot of folks rolling into the Zoom. So we're, um, Cassandra is letting people in as they come. You should be able to see our info share agenda. I'm Delight Mells, one of the training specialists, and I have Kara Thrasher Livingston here with me, Anna Williams, and Cassandra Lynch, and Kat, our care coordinator liaison or, or CC support, is not with us today, but she is all good, just isn't here with us. Okay, she had some conflicts and wouldn't, wasn't able to participate. But today's kind of a big day. Um, we're still admitting people, it looks like. Mm -hmm. Maybe give a minute or two for everybody to join. So the, the reason why it's a little different today is because we're using the platform Zoom. And as people are coming in, um, we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, Zoom is, is different than GoTo. Go to uh, webinar, which we were have been using for many years. One of the differences is it takes a little bit of time for people to come in, um, and they're joining right now. Uh, the other thing about it is that um, it's uh, it's more it, folks have been asking us for a more interactive experience in um, the meetings and trainings we do. So we're we're trying Zoom as a platform for this meeting so that folks have the capability to, uh, of course, message in the chat, but also to share video. 
uh, to join by audio only and um, to uh, to interact with the, with the chat. So just be aware that in Zoom, your chats are visible to everybody, all of the people in the meeting, and which is great because that's what Zoom's all about. Um, we are able to, you know, see the different questions that are coming through and perhaps written answers if we had a chance to, you know, put something back in, in writing as far as a question goes. Um, but they do take a few minutes for people to join, <laughs> to join in. So I still see people joining. Uh, we'll do our best. And of course we can email the agenda. There was one question saying that. Um, we will also still, we always email the materials and a link to the recording because we do record it and it gets put onto our YouTube channel. We will email you um, a copy of the agenda and a link to the recording. Um, we will um, also email in that same email, the title and wording in it will say that it's worth one hour CEH. So nothing really changes except the Zoom platform. We're excited about it. Um, a little bit of history way before we uh, had <clears throat> the uh, way before we had Zoom, we only had GoTo. So GoTo meeting was the only method that we were, you know, could put together as an option. And it had different ways of interacting. Uh, it wasn't possible to read the chat or read all the questions at the same time as a participant. And we went with that for a long, long time, many years, because that's what we had. And so during COVID, uh, state employees received Zoom. So um, we were able to begin using Zoom, not only to do work uh, remotely, but also for us, it was very familiar to us because we would do our work, which is teaching remotely on Zoom. Uh, so we're thinking about converting this meeting to Zoom uh, for the rest of the year, I mean, a coming year. Uh, this December session was the one that was left off of GoTo because it was only possible to schedule a year's worth of GoTo at one time. So we couldn't, couldn't make 13 months, but yet we'd be trying to schedule it in December and it would always leave off, you know, depending on when we made the meeting series, it would always leave off a month. And sometimes we didn't even get a chance to start at the, in January. So it was a year from like a random month to the next random month. Um, so, you know, it's just one of the functionalities of GoTo, um, no big deal. So that being said, we are here. Uh, looks like most people have come into the space. Um, we'll do our agenda. Uh, Delight will walk us through that and some quick reminders about resources available to you. And then we can have time for Q&A if that is what people would like to do. And you would, of course, be able to show your video and unmute your audio. In the meantime, please keep your audio muted um, and uh, we'll be able to give our full attention to our presenter. So go ahead, Delight. Thank you. Hi, yeah. Uh, it's good to see you all and have you in this different space, but it's the same kind of environment like we would normally do, only this time I get to hear your voices and see you if you want to en engage with us, which is really great. We're glad to be kind of transitioning that direction. So really big webinar happening tomorrow on acuity, and we really want you to participate if possible. What is it going to be? Essentially, it's a stakeholder input session that's going to provide information about changes to acuity, get feedback from the public on the various stakeholders within um, that would be impacted by acuity. And we'll send you, there was an e-alert that was issued about it and there the agenda also has the registration link. Maybe one of my teammates can drop the registration link into the chat so that you all can take a look at it from there as well. Why do we want you to go? Well, because you, 
you're the one that requests security on behalf of the Alaskan. So we really think that it's important that you kind of get a exposure to how acuity is changing and ask your questions in that environment. So that's where we wanna direct you to for questions about acuity. Come tomorrow, it's from noon to one and you can register for it. And I actually, uh, Kara, I think that one's through a Zoom too. I might be mistaken, but I believe it's through Zoom. So that's a typo that it's in webinar. So that's one of the big it's things we want you to do. Yes, register for that, come to that. It's a lunch and learn kind of, you know, come during the lunch hour. If you have families that would are impacted by acuity, pass this on to them as well. Um, so that's the really uh, one of, that's the big thing happening this week that we want to keep you in the loop on. So special topics today. They all kind of lead together, um, but the first big one is the person-centered practice. Kara, you're in the process of developing curriculum on this, right? Do you want to just kind of share quickly where that that you're what you're working on? Sure. This is going to be a, a class that's available or a course available in our uh, learning management system. Um, I'm going to hit send in the chat with a, a link to register for the acuity one. Don't be scared. It's a really long link. I got for some reason when you get them out of our our e-alert archive, the links are super long, but it should work OK. Uh, but yeah, I'm excited about it. It is, um, it's going to be awesome. It'll be a learning unit and it'll be about person-centered care coordination. Um, according to regs, it'll be like a breakdown of the reg and it'll be some best practices. Um, and we're in general, we're really working on our academy options for care coordinators. Ultimately, this will be part of um, beginning care coordination, but accessible as a separate unit at any point. Um, but it's going to be, it'll be fun and interactive, um, and uh, hopefully we'll be done with it soon. Um, if you haven't been to the learning management system, the academy, for a while to check out what we have available there, um, I do want to remind us that if there's anyone in this session who wasn't aware that there's CFC training there, we've gotten a few questions like, is that training done yet? Well, it's always a work in progress, but there is a great learning unit in about CFC in the uh, academy right now that you should definitely participate in if you haven't done so already. But that's it. Thanks. Thanks, Kara. I'm trying to log into the academy right now to show you. So, uh, I'm kind of doing that on the side as we're talking about it. So what what's the trends the trends that like training learning assessments what is training focusing on we're doing back to basics we really are so that's why we're coming back to person-centered practices that's why we talked about care coordination contacts the last info share that we had we are kind of coming out of a long period of change both with public health emergency and with uh, onboarding into harmony and so we're refocusing our training as we're developing the academy to start focusing on core elements of care coordination now for some of you you're like got it this is old news i already do all these things that's okay and that's great. We actually really need your input and your participation in those kind of experiences and because you know the work better than we do because you do it daily. So um, just because you're really seasoned and you may have a lot of expertise in it, um, please bring that experience to some of these training opportunities and explore it through a different um you know, bring bring your contributions, uh, but also uh, be open to exploring concepts in different ways and kind of exploring them. Um, you may be very familiar with the topic, but we hope to engage you in different ways so that you can grow professionally. So if you see some beginning concept kind of ideas coming in through the academy, don't be shy. Take take the take check out those classes. Um, 
on that topic of person-centered practices, we have had a, um, how, there's just no nice way to put this, some reporting of inappropriate ways of soliciting clients. And so I'm sure maybe that gets your attention. Like, what do you mean by inappropriate solicitation? Big, big jargon there. Really, we mean that um, there's essentially poaching clients from other care coordinators, attempting to engage with a waiver service participants while they're receiving a service. This is different than you going and observing a service delivery or different than connecting with your community. So I wanna make that clear. Part of your job is connecting to the, your community, getting to know people, talking to them. Another huge part of your job is overseeing service delivery, how things are going. And you're all really familiar with that. But what really isn't appropriate is when a service delivery process is, in, is happening, someone's engaging in dehabilitation or engaging in adult day, and they're not your client, it's not appropriate for you to begin talking to them and trying to uh, convince them to change coordinators in that venue, okay? That is the separate venue for that. Now, if the client approaches you, that's a little different, right? Like if someone's contacting you and trying to, to find a different care coordinator, that is different. But we're talking about intentionally going to service environments with the intention to, to get a new clients from existing waiver services. Well, what guides this uh, like prohibition? The conditions of participation. So just kind of pulling those up really quickly here, making sure you're aware of where those are. I know that all, you all do, but let's just humor me for the sake of making sure we all are on the same page for that. There is some com information under the director's communications about solicitation. So that is down here at the very bottom, prohibition on solicitation of recipients. It's a little bit more geared towards personal care services, right, Kara? Is that accurate to say? That's what this one sort of is geared towards. Um, but your role in your role as a care coordinator, your conditions of participation are very clear about that. So going down to our of interest section, right, down to of interest down here, going to SDS regulations and related materials, right, under home and community-based waivers, waiver conditions of participation. And then you can find your conditions of participation here. So we're just going through and showing you this. Um, just to remind you where it is. And Kara, it's towards the bottom. I want to say that that solicitation section, correct me if I'm wrong if I pass it. It's under this conflict of interest section. Care coordinators may not. Okay. So we have care coordinators must on the first half, and then they may not on the second half. And the first one, the care coordinator may not solicit as clients any recipients known to be receiving services from another care coordinator or provider agency. So kind of a problem, right, to go to a agency that's holding, like they're delivering a service, because that means you know that the person's receiving services and soliciting at those environments. I'm seeing some chats coming in, which I am not keeping total track of that. So I'm sorry about that. I hope you're having a good, robust 
uh, con like discussion in there. What I would like to do right now is I would like for you to tell me of ways that you find me new clients. What are other ways that we can connect with people that may need help? Do you have any recommendations to any to a new care coordinator or an existing care coordinator for finding clients? You can unmute yourself if you'd like. That's what Zoom's all about. Or you can drop it in the How about chat. if they raise their hand to light and then we can unmute them <laughs> versus everyone unmuting at once. If they raise their hand, I can recognize them. So Delight's asking if the, if there's any ways that we want to share with our care community care coordinator community here on uh, on ways to let people know that we're out there as a care coordinator and available. Any creative ideas or anything that's particularly worked for you? And I'm seeing the like I'll just like the state answer is the ADRC DDRCs. So you guys are nailing that one. I'm seeing that come through. You know, our ADRCs and DDRCs are typically nonprofits that get grants to do the ADRC DDRC processes. So they have community presence and you connecting with that venue in your community, letting them know, hey, I, I have openings in my caseload. You're welcome to connect people to me as one of the individuals that you can, um, you can, that can help. Um, another way that you can do this too is that you can edit your provider record to make sure that it says you are accepting clients and that you are serving specific waiver types. And as of this morning, you now are able to specify if your care coordination agency has specific languages that you specialize in. So if you have a special skill set, skill set for a different language uh, than, you know, English, uh, then you are able to document that in your provider record and DDRCs, ADRCs are able to look at that. So Kara, have you seen any really great suggestions that are different than the typical answer we give about so talking to ADRCs, DDRCs? Um, there was uh, one that reported that they're having, and if I'm if I'm getting it right, great. If not, I apologize. Uh, having a good relationship with uh, enrollment coordinator at a health center and case manager at the hospital. That's a really good good way to let people know that you're there to, to serve. Um, someone then, also someone also stated um, posted on the Facebook page let people know that you have the availabilities and um, on their care coordinator Facebook page. And, uh, local community outreach training so that people who want to know about waiver and the process to apply and everything can come to it. I thought that was really cool. Let the community know about what, what the system is. Make sure people know you're accepting clients. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Couple I'm just of, catching up on the chat right now. Yeah, so I'm like too. reading it yeah. in and these are great suggestions. A couple yeah. folks have put a concern about um, assisted living home influencing clients to change to a favorite care coordinator of the home. Again, that you can report that. Just use the same link as CIR and identify it as a QA report because the provider memo says all providers, you know, and, and it it's it's targeted at providers in general. I know we spotlighted care coordinator cops and we're not prepared to spotlight every single other other providers types 
you know, cops, but just report it. If you think that people are being influenced um, to make choices they wouldn't otherwise make because of the relationship that the person's offering the info has to them, i.e. a relationship of power, then you should just report it. Help us know more about what that looks like. And I just dropped the link in here to this memo. So that's now in your chat. And it is, you know, I just pulled it up because we had thought it was just for PCA, but it's for all provider types. So state plan and home and community based services and CFC that seems to ride in between both of those. Um, you know, you you really do have to be aware of conflicts of interests. And so thank you for having, uh, for your input and your ideas and talking about it. You know, the biggest thing is that we want to, you know, what is it? Sunshine is the greatest form of disinfectant. Um, we need to talk about these things because it's really important that we acknowledge that conflicts of interest do happen and we need to be mindful of separating those where we can and supporting our community as a whole because we are a rural remote place that's very very spread out we do not have a unlimited amount of providers we really are all in this together so we really need to practice our professional skills and be mindful of those difficult situations where we're transferring cases between care coordinators and that when we have those kind of transfers, we work together to share case records as required through conditions of participation, that we're mindful of who's doing what on billing, who's filing what on billing, and that we work together to ensure that people's needs are being met. Um, and I, I know that many of you, like I said at the beginning, many of you are like, this is just, this is just how we do. But again, we're kind of coming back and going back to the basics because these basics are really important. These basics are how we can be able to actually do person-centered processes and planning where it's about the person and making sure that their continuity of their care is provided, it's ensured. And that's what you do as the care coordinator. So that was like kind of the tough talk to have to talk about. And the next piece of that is touching on something that we have told you we no longer need at SDS. I'm gonna go back to our agenda. Remember when we said you no longer need to turn in the overview sheets, right? We still don't need those. Those are gonna be fit, like those will be officially documented at the end of the support plan process, you know, those overview sheets. But we've heard from a lot of providers that they really rely on that tool for ensuring that the billing's accurate. Now, this is like an example of working together to support each other, to model the behaviors we want with providers. So, if you find that an agency says, hey, can I see the old overview sheet? Or can you send me a screenshot of plan services from a Harmony? You could do that. There's nothing saying you can't do that. It's a planning tool at that phase. That, that is fine. SDS doesn't want the overview sheet turned in because it changes. Things get changed and things happen like that where they like to, like units shift or things change. So we don't want the overview sheet turned into us. We want that documented in the case file at the end with the signed support plan where everybody signed, even the reviewer, everybody signed it. That's the overview we want in Harmony to be to stick in Harmony. But 
again, just like you ask our providers for service notes and for documentation, we would really appreciate it if they ask you for help by being able to confirm their Medicaid number, the units, like all of that. They're just wanting to make sure they're doing all those checks. If they ask for it, um, please consider helping them by doing that. It's not a requirement. It is an exercise in working together. And that's really, that's really what we're asking of you. Because the logistics of operation is we don't need the overview sheet through SDS at the beginning. We don't need it at the beginning. We want it at the end. But your providers, they're, some of them are saying they really need it for their processes, and that's okay. So any thoughts about that or concerns? You're welcome to bring that up now. Hey, Delight, this is Abby. I'm kind of confused. So you, we're not supposed to put it with the packet, but then after it's been approved, download it and send it to providers? Is that what you mean? The reviewer should have attached it to the final packet. So what you get back when it's all signed, you should have an overview and that should definitely be circulated. What we're hearing is that some providers rely on that overview sheet for checking the draft. So they would really appreciate a screenshot of planned services or running that, a care coordinator running it as a planning tool. Do you have to do that? No, you do not need to turn it in. We're asking that this is like an example of collaborative planning and working on working as teams because you do have access to that tool and that uh, you can take a picture of your plan services so that agencies can do like make sure that the right locations are being selected, the right total units have been entered. And that's not to say, it's just like a check. We heard that as a, a request from provider agencies. So we thought we'd bring it to you so that you're aware that some teams really are using it to be able to make sure the support plans are um, being submitted with, with, with already kind of an initial QCing. Does that help, Abby? So I was behind times, I guess, and I was still including the cost sheet and I can understand agencies wanting to see it. So it sounds like if I was still including it, just keep on doing what I was doing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we just don't need it in the front side of your submission from SDS. SDS doesn't need it, but you're doing fine. You're, if you're just continuing to practice that way, that's totally fine. Any other thoughts or confusions or requests for clarification? Thank you, that helped me. Yeah, no problem. So that comes to our last piece, which is like full circle, right? Full circle back to solicitation. And we're going to be sending you a little supplemental guide Cat will be, oh, that's the wrong one. That's the old one, the last supplemental. We're looking for, forgive me, I left the last one open. Let me grab the new one. Okay. Lots of screens here. And lots of, there we go. Lots of a little bit of delay. So what's this about? We're saying that you have the option of adding a new language in Harmony. And this is the step-by-step -step instructions for that. This is already in the Harmony guide um, for accepting new clients, but it's being updated so you can add a language, that last bullet, adding a language. I'm going to demonstrate that for you now in Harmony, if you're okay with that. So let me go ahead and grab it. Going into Harmony, I'm a care coordinator and I wanna look at my agency provider record. 
So I would go to this provider tab up here at the top and click on it. And for me to see all of the records that I'm connected to, I'm going to leave this search blank and hit search. As you can see, I have a variety of agencies that I'm connected to. You will too. You'll have your primary agency, your own individual record, and some of you might be connected to a backup. Totally possible. For you to update your accepting clients and your different, the identifying waivers you specialize in and language, we're asking you to update the agency record. You can update your personal one as well, but we're encouraging ADRCs and DDRC, DDRCs to search by agency so that when they give a list to a client that it's just the agency numbers so that um, it's a little bit cleaner results for them and they don't have to call, you know, they, they don't call 12 care coordinators that are in the same agency, okay? So update your agency record. And you can do that once you click in. You can go up to this edit provider up here at the top. And it's going to open up a new window in Chrome. And you can see hmm, that it's giving me some troubles. I have my accepting new clients checkbox. I can then show who I'm accepting clients and the different programs. So I can choose, like I'm gonna put Tefra back, like maybe I'm not serving Tefra, I've, I have enough Tefra clients, or maybe I want to put them over there, I can stick them across, but you'll move your services that you want to offer from the left to the right. So this box to the right are the waivers and programs that my agency serves. So what's a little weird here? Um, you should be able to select the language of your choice. And I'm not sure why mine's not working. We got this to start today. So I'm going to connect with Harmony Help and make sure that it gets fixed because you should be able to select the languages that your agency uh, speaks fluently. And this is to hopefully help. Oh, some, some of you are saying it's working on your end. Oh, that's great news. I don't know why it's not on mine. You know, that probably means I need to clear my cash. Yes. Clean also, the cookies. Yeah. The programs are probably not going to be all the ones that you have to, you know, they're, they're probably going to be just ones that care coordinators have. Right. Very possible. So it might be just like my weird trainer role that's kind of causing this to glitch. So after you've made your selections, including your language, make sure you save and close your provider or save provider, but you need to save it, okay? Like in everything in Harmony. So where, where else is this going to apply? We're gonna start working on getting this online for PC agencies as well so that they can select if they're um if they can select the languages that they have a specialty in as well that's where we're starting we're always growing and trying to evolve but that's kind of the dynamics that we have at this time and what we have for harmony for you today so I just seen taking a quick look, how do I update my fax number? You'll actually need to do a CERT 06 to do that. And those are actually the, the instructions in Harmony will tell you in your T24 will tell you the same. You need to update your certification information for that to be changed. So where do I find the CERT 06? It's under form. So I'm going to take you there because that's a really great question. And we need you to keep your certification information up to date because it impacts all of the records in Harmony. So let's go to 
Senior Disability Services. Roll down to of interest over here to approved forms. We're going to jump down to provider certification. And you know what, if I'm going too fast, just pop into office hours and we can do this just for you, okay? So if you're like not able to keep up with the notes, it's okay, just come visit me. Under provider certification forms, we're going 06 service declaration, care coordination services. Let's open it up. And this is where you'd provide your agency information, update any emails and things like that, fax number. And then when you submit it to PCC, so that's Provider Certification and Compliance, you would do that. They have their email at the bottom on how to submit, the very bottom down here usually. It should have their email address but you're going to email it to them and you can just tell them in the body of the email what it is you changed, just as like a heads up, as just to be like, oh, I'm changing my fax number, here's my form and include it. Um, so, it, so CC's at an agency, do we all need to do this updating the new, uh, the accepting new clients or can it just be done once? Only the agency. So if you're a larger agency, I would recommend that only the program administrator of the agency, the lead care coordinator, manage this piece. So that would mean talking to all of your staff and asking your, your team, like, does anybody have any special language skills that we can document on our uh, provider record as an agency? Because we want to be able to give we want to ease access for Alaskans. So when we give them search results and it's like 15 care coordinators in their region, but 12 of them are all through the same agency, we really only want to give them three contact points, right? So that, you know, the 12 possible care coordinators that like if there's an opening within that agency, if someone can support them, you can do it that way. All right. Any other questions, Kara, that you've seen kind of come through? Um, a lot of folks were asking how to do it and then you showed, so that's good. Uh, question says, can ADRC agencies actually see what types of waivers we're accepting? I get calls for waiver types I'm not accepting, so I thought they couldn't see it. Or are they just not breaking it down? They may not be pulling the, so there are a lot of ways to pull information out of Harmony. And so that to me is an indication that maybe they're not accessing all of the different reports that they have access to. That's okay. Um, we'll be spending some time in the very near future on how to pull reports for rep different provider types. And that'll be information that they're going to learn about. So yes, we are noted. I would say that that observation is a, is a um, indicator that we need to work more on that. We've been kind of experiencing that ourselves that maybe not everyone's using the same resources or the information isn't as updated, something's up with it. So our attempt here in working with you is to at least get your information updated so that when we have that information pull correctly, we have teams pull that information correctly, it's updated. So if you can help us with that, it would be very appreciated. Question says, what about transfers? Shouldn't it be able to distinguish if the care coordinator is only taking transfers or initials or both? Well, that's a great question. A lot of things in Harmony are limited by the amount of spots we have per page. So some, so like the provider record we were just looking at, 
there's only so many spots. Like there's only so much real estate on this particular page. So when we try to do something new, sometimes that means we let something go in order to do something new or we had the spots for it. I can bring that information to our teams to discuss as like a way to distinguish, but it may not, I, I just honestly don't know if we have the space for it. But I like the suggestion. Any other thoughts? Let me see. Chat's rolling through. Oh, that's cool. So yeah, make a plug, Stephanie. If you want to unmute and talk a little bit more about that, I would really appreciate it. You're welcome to bring that up. Sure, Delight. So <clears throat> at the um, care or not the AADD recently, the care coordinators who were there at the in-person meeting, we talked about coming up with um, our own code of ethics for care coordination. And I love that you were talking about solicitation and then how, you know, if folks aren't part of AADD, you know, you can definitely join as a care coordinator because um, part of the code of ethics and the commitment to that would be like how to handle situations that could be construed as solicitation or, you know, how do you, you know, how do you handle that? Because there are many, many scenarios that I'm sure all of us have experienced. So Anyway, so just as a plug for AADD for care coordinators who aren't a part of that, um, I'll put a link in the chat, but it'd be great if more people wanted to join. Stephanie, could you tell them what AADD means? Sure. That's the Alaska Association for Developmental Disability Providers. And I'm just going to, this is Denise, I just want to throw out too that, you know, there's just so much that we are getting from Kim, who's running that. We have an individual monthly meeting as care coordinators only on the AADD. And if we have issues with anything, she brings people together from billing to um, DPA to SDS to brainstorm how to resolve these issues. So it's um, just a wealth of information that we get each month. Um, there's uh, another breakout session. If we need you know, more information on something, um, she'll set it up for later in the month. So you know, often we have an opportunity of three times to get information that we're specifically asking for. Um, so I, I just can't say enough about it. Um, they had a great two person, two day in person meeting um, in October. It was awesome. So I'm, I'd like to do a plug for that as well. Cool. Thanks, guys. Is there anything else that is on your mind that you would like to ask about or? Um, you know, that feedback that you feel is important for training team to know at this time? Are there specific learning needs that you have? We're open to your suggestions. And if you don't have anything, that's okay too. We'll give you guys some time. I'll pull up the agenda again. So yeah, we have a few reminders here about your resources for support, care coordination support, office hours, Zoom. Um, provider support is uh, another office hour in, when, in which care coordinators are welcome, but it, we're targeting that towards all other waiver providers. Nobody gets kicked out. So if you wanna come in at, on that time instead, that's okay too. Uh, we welcome you to let providers know about that office hour. So, you know, if a provider has a question and you think that they could benefit from a direct meeting with us or just come to us and ask a question, that's the link to give them. We'll email this out to you. So don't worry about having to copy it or anything right now. YouTube channel for both training and policy. Our policy unit 
does the webinars, which are outreach about the different um, reg initiatives and uh, stakeholder engagement opportunities for yourself and all Alaskans potentially affected by the changes to regs or development of new regs. Um, and then, then, of course, our training channel, which holds our training, our, our recordings of trainings and our training academy itself. So we're looking forward to making a series of, a new series of the, these monthly info shares for both care coordinators and providers. And uh, we're also looking at developing and using a family and individual info share as well. So we'll be trying to get that off the ground in 2024. So people we serve, any Alaskan um, with questions about state stuff <laughs> could come and, and talk with us uh, for an office hour as well. Um, questions in the chat. Curious if there are any updates on NFLOC, nursing facility level of care unit, changing dates for reapplications for both waivers and CFC. They are so delayed in assessments and approvals, I'm often getting approvals when I'm already starting the next year's reapplication. Just curious if it's just me or if it's an issue for others. Uh, and then supported, supported decision-making training happens this Thursday. We're having a wonderful webinar with uh, Ann Applegate. So I encourage you, if you would like to earn three hours CEH, go to our training academy, sign up for the course. You know, you can self-register, view the video, answer a few questions, and then come to the session. And 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 we'll deliver the session. You know, as a, a facilitated back and forth, not another lecture, because that's what the video is for. So, I encourage you to do that. So, on oh. the question of NFLOC um, dates and things like that. That is something that is occurring for that, the waivers that are impacted by that and flock side of assessments. We have been doing level of care extensions to catch, catch up that lag. We're trying to catch it up. Um, so yes, you are not the only one that's experiencing that. It is something that is occurring. SDS is trying to get caught back up. They're doing extensions where they can. They're doing file reviews where they can. Um, Denise, I see your hand. Yeah, Um. so I just wanted to ask a question about on the application when you mark want an assessment. So most of my people in assisted living, I say they don't want an assessment. They just want to continue with services. But I did have an individual who wanted an assessment. They had some declines. We didn't really want to put in a PCA amendment, but we would like him to be reassessed. And they sent me back a um, file review and said, I need to probably request that through an amendment through PCA. So I'm just like, why are we having that question on there then? I'm, I just, it seems like an odd thing to make me have to answer. And then it actually means nothing. You know, that's a great question. Um, I honestly, like, so I'd like to say that every time we make these selections that they're, like, it's a really clear indicator of it'll go a certain direction. But sometimes there's elements to the case that we, you know, that would indicate that it's okay to do file review. Uh, but I am very interested in this case, Denise, because a uh, recipient choice, somebody asked. <laughs> so um, we can bring back that to teams. Um, if someone does want to have an in-person assessment, I, that is- I, That was I actually my point. I ask every time because I don't wanna make a decision for them and 99% of the people say no. I've done amendments where we've lost hours thinking people have declined. I've seen that happen. I've talked to this client about those potentials, but we are having enough decline that we feel like there are areas of the support plan for PCA that will be affected. Uh, we're kind of feeling confident anyway. Um, and so we wanted this assessment. And so I just was surprised to get, you know, and when I called, I was just told the file review was available. We could do it. I'm like, yeah, but we asked for it to be the assessment. So I, I know I'm getting in touch with Eli about it, but um, I just, yeah, 
it's just something I put on my radar to be very careful about making that choice, not for them, let for let, let them make it. And then it's like, it doesn't seem like it mattered. So. Well, thank you for actually making it a point of choice. The more points of choice we can give our Alaskans, the better, because like they are, they're just vulnerable and helping them have those choices is really important. So that's really great feedback that, um, you know, that's the kind of feedback that we really want to be aware of and be in touch with, because sometimes I think we all get a little excited about the opportunities of efficiency of like, oh, we don't have to do it this way. Um, but sometimes that's not always the point, right, as you well, well stated. So we can take that back as something to explore. I didn't look at the case. I don't know the dynamics of it. So, you know, when we're talking about these very case specifics, it's hard to get in. Like we, we have to be careful not to get into the weeds, right? Like, cause of that, but it's, you always win if you go by person, like the person's choices, right? Supporting those choices. So thank well, you for bringing I, I that Well, I get that up. you have to kind of document you've had a decline to request one in a way, right? Because you're, you know, why would you need one if you hadn't had some level of decline? So I understand that you need to document that as well. And maybe there's some threshold there they're requesting in the document to show that decline rather than me just saying it, maybe more records or something, or they need to have been hospitalized or I don't know. That's why I'm throwing it at you. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. I really do. Um, I finally managed to log into the academy. Um, it took me a minute on the side. I didn't want you to, because Talking and typing and listening sometimes takes a little extra attempts on my typing to get things in. So I'm in. I'm in the academy. What am I showing you in here? I wanted to take you to the site home because I'll be honest, I have gotten lost on the site home. Um, how have I gotten lost? Well, I have seen classes that I put in myself not show up on the front of the page. And that was frustrating. I had to adjust it a few times before it could show up. So I want you to know like, oh, there's that supported decision-making class. Hey, you could click in and select that. But you know, if you're ever in here and you're like, okay, I'm not really seeing what I want or like maybe there's more information on here than just on the list. If you scroll all the way to the bottom, um, you can click all courses and it will give you a bunch of categories or you can search for a keyword. So just something to be aware of that you can always search for keywords and that will pull up. So if you are looking for, I don't know, community first choice, you want CFC training, you look up community. And you can see like, I've got some extra superpowers here. So like, you know, bear in mind that See if it'll pull it up. Here's everything that touches on community. So just some, uh, you know, ways to access different training opportunities. Any other questions or thoughts before we wrap up our session? We've got four minutes to go. And as always, oh, go ahead. Not to butt in and I apologize. Um, but remind them that it was the courses will pull up that's available for them based on what they signed up, like if it's care coordinator or um, PCA agency. In some courses, they have to come through us to have to show up on their page. Right. And I think the what you're saying, Cassandra, the, is that they can self-enroll in some courses that are open to all. Absolutely. Some of the courses, if if you click on them and it says you cannot self-enroll, email sdstraining at alaska.gov and request enrollment. We don't have care coordinator renewal quiz open to everyone because we share this with infant learning program as well. So, you know, it's too confusing to have everything available to everybody. Right. And Harmony is not open to everyone as well. Right. So the big clue is do I have to 
do I have to contact SDS or can I access it myself? If you see the little arrow, you can enroll yourself. You can take that documentation class open to everybody. But if you were wanting to take, you know, care coordinator responsibilities, you would maybe need to contact us. So just keep that in mind. I'm seeing a couple of other chats. Some of them, they look like they might be great opportunities for um, special guests. So I'm hearing some interest in file reviews and how do you get a file review? What if you don't want a file review? That sounds like a topic that we could explore for uh, special topics. And then, yes, there's... Um, full lives conference coming up thank you for that plug Denise um, that would be really really a great opportunity for any care coordinator to participate in that committee planning process do you want to develop some leadership skills some collaborative skills um, offer to participate as a committee member um, anybody anything else to add and Denise put all that contact information in the chat, I believe. So as always, I just wanna thank you all for all that you do. And I'm glad that you're liking this new interface. Like Kara said, before Zoom, we didn't have Zoom, we just had GoToWebinar. And we're excited to try new things. We're always trying to, develop better ways for you to engage with this information because supporting you helps uh, support Alaskans. So we really do value you and all the work that you do. But yeah, that's it. Anything else, guys? All right. See you next time or see you in office hours. Have a good evening, everyone.